All right, guys, it's time for the big reveal. It's time to share my gala gown and my Barbie outfit. Hello and welcome or welcome back to So Pomona. I'm Rebecca and I'm so glad you're here. Um, this video has been a little bit delayed. I got sick. Um, I had some other issues, but I am back today to share my gala gown and my Barbie outfit. Um, these are outfits that I made specifically for the 10K gala and the BobCon event. Um, if you missed the earlier videos, I have um, a few, I think two or three videos on um, the planning for my gala gown and uh, talking a little bit about my Barbie outfit. And then two weeks ago, I did a, and then I also did a video when I was planning on what I was going to wear at the conference. If you want to go back and watch those videos, I will leave the links below in the description. And I'm also doing a whole blog post on my gala gown this week that you can go over and find all the sewing pattern review details. And then next week, I'm going to share on my blog everything about my Barbie outfit. I just had so many pictures, I really had to separate it out into two posts. So if you don't know, this is from the BobCon event I went to in the beginning of January. That's the Business of Photography Conference. Um, my sister is a speaking coach. Sister is a business coach. And this was her conference that she held uh, up in Orlando. So um, I work for one of my sister's companies. I do SEO uh, for Liftoff Leads. And um, so she invited me up to this conference to attend all these classes. And it was so amazing. I learned so much. And I had such a great time, met wonderful, met some wonderful people. I have so many new friends. And I had an amazing time at all these events. So I've been planning out my gala gown for outfit for a few months now, ever since we got back from our trip to Palm Springs in LA, when my sister invited me to go to the gala. Um, the gala is the 10K club for photographers who have made sales over 10K. And um, I got to go as a guest and I went with my, um, I spent tons of time hanging out with Missy, which was so much fun. Um, she is my my sister's husband's sister, so we're sisters. And um, she is also a seamstress. Uh, she worked as a costumer uh, for a long time. And so we both made our gowns and it was really fun to dress up together and get our pictures taken. So I'm going to also insert pictures throughout this whole video so you can see some of the photography. Um, they had professional photographers at all the events we went to and um, the Barbie party was more taking selfies, but they had stations set up where you could take photos. So um, Hugh Fiorietti um, did the photo shoot, the main photo shoot that um, I have my gala gown pictures of, and they are so beautiful. And I just felt amazing, like a princess. So this is my finished gown. I am going to put up a video of me wearing it and then pictures. Um, I wanted you to see the gown worn, but I also wanted to not be wearing it for this video so that I can show you the construction. The fabric is a periwinkle poly satin from Blackbird Fabrics. And then um, the other supplies I got all from Moon. The horsehair braid, the taffeta and periwinkle, um, all the trims, the zipper, that was all from Moon Fabrics. But I think it just turned out beautiful and I love this gown. And I originally was thinking about going with silk and 
there's just the cost was a bit prohibitive. So I went with this poly satin because I did need six and a half meters to make this. And then uh, with all the underlining. So you can kind of see it's got this side pannier um, structure that's built into it which gives it a great shape when it warm because it kind of flares out at the hip. And then it's got this draped front. It's got kind of this shaped bodice and a very low back with these great wide straps. So this was really comfortable to wear. I felt great in it all night. And it was nice to wear something so pretty that was also very, very comfortable. So I wore it with my Vivea shoes. Um, I found these in this denim blue that I think matches almost exactly. And um, because I broke my ankle, um, because I broke my foot a few years ago, I only wear flats. So it was nice to find a really pretty pair of flats that I can wear for, with this dress, but also wear in real life. And then I got a little clutch from Anthropology, just this woven clutch. And then I also had this choker that, I mean, I really lucked out finding this one. It's really the perfect colors for this. So periwinkle is my favorite color of blue. I love this shade. So I wanted to make a gown in my favorite shade. And this was kind of exciting for me to make because I have never made a gown before. Um, I didn't really wear a wedding gown. I wore a cocktail dress in a um, aqua teal color that was short because I had a beach wedding. So this was my chance to really go out and all make a true gown. So let me show you the inner workings of this. So it's got a hook and eye closure and then a back zipper. Um, their zipper was shown, I tried to get it as invisible as I could, but um, it's pretty good, I think. All right, so then you can see the inner structure of this. The lining has um, this paneled bodice, and then it's got um, elastic inserted into the waist to help hold up the weight of this gown. Let me show you from the inside. All right, so I think you can get a better idea of the structure of the gown when you see it from the reverse. So it has got all these panels, and I'm also gonna show the underside of these so that you can get a really good idea of it. So, okay. Here is the front, and you can see these pleated sections, kind of how they push out the, with the shaping. And then it's got horsehair braid um, sewn into it to keep the shape. And then in the back, let me see if I can show you this, because it is attached. It has got these tiers of ruffles, which really helps to fill out that gown at the back and give that nice, um, draped to the back of the skirt because the back is longer than the front so that you almost have a train but this is um, hemmed up to hit exactly at the floor and I did uh, hem it by hand while I was wearing my shoes so that I could see the length and it's got horsehair braid inserted into the hem which is hand stitched so I will talk about more um, construction details on the blog but I just wanted to show you what this looks like and give you a really good idea of the gown. Um, I did talk about some of the construction in the earlier video as well. So I really love this pleated shape in the front and it does have boning right here in the center front in these little pieces to give it a little bit so it stays upright. Um, I kind of wish I had taken in my bodice a little more. I think because this fabric is so drapey compared to the muslin fabric, it was a little big and I did have to take it in at the side seam on both sides, um, but I kind of had to finagle it a little bit. Um, so if I do ever make this again, I will take it in, I'd say a good half inch on each side seam. That is my gala gown. 
And I just, I really love this seaming, how it goes in at the back and then it has these panels on the side. It's just beautiful. And I actually, when I was younger, my mother made me a Sleeping Beauty costume that was almost in this exact same shade. So that may be why I was so drawn to it. All right, next I'm going to show you my Barbie outfit. This was for the last day of the conference. We ended off the conference with this fun Barbie themed party. Was just like all dancing and music which was great this was the first time i had really danced since i broke my ankle and so i danced all night i had such a great time so i had to make this outfit the day before i left my fabric came in the day before i was leaving for the conference or maybe two days before um my first outfit was just too tight and i could not get the fit right and i didn't have any extra fabric to work with so I ordered this stretch velvet from Stone Mountain and Daughter. It's a beautiful stretch velvet. And I draped a bodice and then um, used my general pant pattern to make um, the pants. So it's just a really quick, easy to put on a uh, stretch jumpsuit. Um, I love the low back. I thought it was really fun and the, with the square neckline. I'm gonna put up my inspiration picture so you can see where I got the idea from this. But I love how this turned out and I feel like I'll wear this at, around the holidays um, because it's like super comfortable. I mean, it's just all stretch and it's really cute. Now I did accidentally cut the back upside down, but I'm gonna choose to call that a design feature. I think it look, looks kind of cute in the different color because it is, I cut it upside down. But um, let me show you the inside. So the pant is just the stretch velvet. And then I lined the bodice with this extra um, fabric that's also from Stone Mountain and Daughter that I used um, for one of my slips earlier in the year. So it's just a very simple, basic design, but, um, and I did do a nice deep hem on it. Now the fit is not perfect, but this is also because I did make it the day before, but I'm pretty happy with how this turned out and it was so comfortable for dancing. And then, of course, I had to have some nice glittery shoes. Um, these were just an inexpensive pair I found. They did give me blisters, but they looked cute. And then I found some little pink earrings. I was going to wear a pair that Missy gave me, but they fell and one of the jewels came out. So I got a new pair that were kind of similar and really fun. And I did wear my hair down in the beginning, but then I put it up in a ponytail when I was dancing. So I made two jackets. I made this little velvet bolero. Um, this is just self-draped. Um, I just draped this. It's just a little bolero jacket. Um, the edges are unfinished. It's just cut, but it's really cute. And I think if it had been colder, I would have worn this. Um, 
Now, this is the original jacket I made to wear with my other jumpsuit. And I wasn't sure how these two were going to go together, but it looked really cute. And with the Barbie theme, this was really fun. And I can see myself wearing this in the spring. It is this beautiful petal organza from Marcy Tilton. And I just, I love this. The fabric was so gorgeous. And I kind of just draped this with the shape I had in mind. I just wanted a simple boxy jacket. Um, I didn't have a ton of this material, so I just went for kind of like a square sleeve. I think you can see how this is paneled. And then um, I just kind of draped this. You can see this is just a straight panel. And then I used um, the salvage edges for the front so that I wouldn't have to finish anything. And I just surged everything in uh, matching thread. So the entire thing is just surged. It's really simple. I was trying to keep the finishing very uncomplicated because I just love the material. And what I did do with the bottom hem is I cut it and then turned it under so that the petals would be going down. But I love this jacket and I think it's so cute. So this was just really a fun topper to add to this outfit. I had such a great time. I might have partied a little too hard because I came back really sick, but I'm doing much better now. And I'm excited to show you what I've been working on. Um, I have a few new makes that I made in January, uh, mostly the last week or so, uh, once I started feeling better. And I have a new make that I can wear for my birthday on Friday, which I'm really excited about. I'm turning 48 and I'm feeling really good this week. So, and um, I am planning out my spring mood board and finishing up my winter projects. So I hope I have more to share with you next week. All right, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy sewing.